Is Ethereum going to the moon or is Ethereum in hot water? Are they headed for trouble? We are going to talk about that because we're either looking at an eight or $10,000 Ethereum or maybe some prison time for Vitalik or Joseph Lubin. I'll let you be the judge. I'm going to lay out the information. We're going to listen to a few things here and uh, you're going to be, you're going to decide what you think is going to about to happen with Ethereum. So BlackRock has filed to register a new iShares Ethereum trust entity in Delaware. That's why Ethereum has been pumping the last day. Okay, check this out. A website from Delaware Department of State Division and Corporations show that BlackRock advisors filed for an iShares Ethereum trust entity. The filing indicates that BlackRock could be doubling down on crypto with the world's largest asset manager currently awaiting a decision on its spot Bitcoin ETF application from the Securities and Exchange Commission. A BlackRock spokesperson declined to comment the, uh, to the blocks. Ethereum's price has jumped nearly 8%. What I am worried about and what you should be worried about too is Steven Naryoff. He was instrumental in Ethereum's ICO. He has got tapes. He has got evidence that there was some wrongdoing with Ethereum gate. And we follow that on this channel closely. I'm going to play this and you should listen to this very closely because Ethereum is either going to be a hero or Ethereum could end, end up going to a zero eventually if in fact some of these things are brought out and, and, and shown that there was wrongdoing, there was bribes paid, there was a coercion, there was all kinds of stuff. Let me just play this for you and we'll talk about it. I think that what we're seeing with Elizabeth <clears throat> Warren gaining more power domestically, if Biden somehow wins and stays president for another five years in total, it's not good for what the regulatory outlook is for the crypto industry. Steven, thoughts? While Steven jumping uh, on, make sure yeah. anyone, go ahead, Steven. Yeah, we can hear you, man. Yeah, and I think what CC is doing, and they're fighting these cases, but what you have is this legislation that has no safe harbor, that's actually codifying this absurd morphing of decentralization, and they're putting that into the legislation. So what they're fighting for in the courts they're actually backdooring in the legislation and they're going to have the ability to just, he becomes the king and he says, you're a security, you're not. He's going to basically say everything's a security. And it'll, and it'll be codified. Story of our lives. Nobody's kind of really paying attention to that. <laughs> And Loomis is all due respect. Talking about Senator Loomis, she's a, I think she's a Democrat. She's put out some legislation about crypto. It's embarrassing, actually. We've covered it on the channel before, but let's keep it going. She seems like she's a friend of the industry, but. Who's a friend of the industry? Are you talking about? The Senator Loomis. I'm saying, I don't know what sponsoring the bill. Look, there's that, the, the new bill. The, yeah, that, that new bill. I read it in the agenda. Scott, did you see that bill that, that Steve is referring to? Hold on, wait. You've got Steven, you've got Steven Garifas. Now we've got you in our net. So there's no way to run, no way to hide to anybody. I've been reading a lot of articles that you've been talking about a theory. There we go. The articles have been pretty vague. Is there anything we should know about? Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you. We're switching topics. Somebody asks a question and then somebody has to talk over before he answers. Like everybody just wants to be like, hey, I'm important. Listen to what I have to say. Just let the guy ask the question. First of all, let me be clear. I'm not. The, the articles may say what they say in terms of Ethereum. Is this is not a conversation about me and Ethereum, the protocol, right? So I, I'm not anti-Ethereum. I put my hard blood, sweat, and tears into Ethereum. And I'm, I think everybody knows the contributions I've made to that. It's about specific people. If you have questions about that, I can answer that. Joseph Lubin, you know, that Vitalik Vitalik. We're all eating Ethereum. Yeah, tell me. Mario, last time on my spaces, you were asking a very good question. You were asking about when did they, Vitalik and Joe, when did they start distancing themselves from me? And when did they start discrediting my role? And the, the answer to that question was like mid-2017. And then when I got prosecuted, for everybody who doesn't know, we proved that there was multiple agencies that fabricated a crime to prosecute me. That was late 2019. Just so you know, 2019 is the Trump administration, okay? So that was two and a half years before that. Now, you're asking why. I want to make sure because I know everybody knows the whole stories. And you know, why I imagine they don't. So maybe answer it in a way that kind of sums up the story briefly for people that don't know. So I was involved in the very early days of Ethereum from like literally the very first month. My, I created the utility token and the IC there you go. for Ethereum. And then I also, and that was in 2014. And then in 2015, I Metallic called me. And we're actually, everybody should know, we're going to be dropping this 
It was a three hour conversation with, yeah, it was, they were going under. So he asked me to restructure the entire Ethereum foundation to save it. And I've got the whole thing recorded. I'm going to drop it. We're doing it as an NFT free, but everybody can have it. So when are you dropping it very brief? When are you dropping it, Steven? In the next four or five days. So this is about oh, to happen. A master flex. No, <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm recording this on a Friday. I'm going to make sure it comes out tomorrow. On Saturday. And so this could drop any day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. He's about to drop this information. We'll have to see how it looks for Vitalik and, and Lubin and whoever else is involved. I think this is actually a story. This kind of story. No, I, think, I think it's going to wake up a lot of people in terms of this is not about a, this isn't a personal thing, right? But it's, it's going to wake up a lot of people in terms of what really happened back there. People can make their own decisions. I've got it recorded. And so you can see like, what did Vitalik, what did he know? What did Joe know? And and so it's a kind of a piece of history, but it'll also give you some perspective on what was really happening back then. Now you can fast forward, and now I'm going to just flat out say there was a lot of people have heard about this Eats Gate, where there's Eats got this free pass from. It's about to give me context uh, about Ethereum. SEC, where the SEC came up with this uh, argument that they actually took my utility token argument and somehow concocted it into something was a security and it's no longer a security because it's decentralized now. And that's what Hinman gave a speech for. Is everybody familiar with that? Yeah, that's yeah the Hinman speech I think people are aware of, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna... That's the speech where Hinman basically said that each one was security because it's decentralized and that's what Ripple was happening to the Hinman speech and said, if ETH about security, why is Ripple a security? Or XRP a security, sorry. I'm going to make the, I'm going to be very blunt. I will show the evidence on what I'm about to say. For legal reasons, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I will show it to you. It's like weeks. And number one, Ethereum itself did not believe it was decentralized when that speech was given. Nor was it decentralized. Yeah. Nor could Joe or Vitalik have believed it was mm -hmm. because there's internal documents that indicate otherwise. And the only person that understood and had access to the document and understood that was me. And if you follow the fabrication of the crime against me, which I proved from the government's own documents, it was the SEC, it was the FBI, the DOJ, everybody in this industry should care about what happened because they weren't only after me, they were after everybody who's a speaker on here pretty much was on, on a list. They wanted everybody, I told Rand at the time, and I know I sound like a crazy person, but it's true. They were looking to get as many people in this industry as possible. And that all started at the very same time, coincidentally, when Hinman got to the, and the people that were leading the charge at the SEC was Hinman and my prosecution. Uh, Steven, just, I, I just want to know that start to drop. Like, is this one around the fact that they knew that a series wasn't decentralized while Hinman said that it was. It's part that, one. Right? They knew they there was uh, requirements that they had to do that they did not do specifically related to whether or not it would be decentralized. And what are the and what are the implications? We're now five years forward. What, so what are the implications of the fact that it wasn't decentralized? Why? What, what are the implications? Are let's go back. All right, so let's go back for a second. Let's go back to the ICO. The ICO, I think it's pretty clear at this point. And I set it up, okay, but, and it was perfectly fine. And I had the product narrative and I set all the pieces in place. Except if you listen to Gary Gensler, he personally has said that Joe Lubin put bought nine and a half percent. And there's no speculative buying that turns it from a product into a security. So now you've got a securities offering. Yeah. And, okay, and so a now, common promoter. When you go into, is it decentralized? Is it not decentralized? And you've got people like Lubin and Vitalik going out and telling it's decentralized and it's a public market for it. You're now under the securities laws. Now, I'm not going to make an accusation in terms of what laws are broken. Is it securities fraud? Is it market manipulation? Is it what sets for the Probably lawyers to figure out? All of it, right? But you're no longer in. So are you insinuating that potentially there's going to be just against Vitalik and John Lubin? That's, that's up to the DOJ and the SEC. Here's the thing. The SEC claims that they had nothing to do, just so you guys understand what's going on here. The SEC claimed that I was crazy. They had nothing to do with this. None of this happened. 
And then I requested all the information that they have on me, which they said they didn't have any, but then by law, they had to tell me they have four gigabytes of data on me in just a five year period. What the hell is 14 gigabytes if they have nothing to do with my prosecution? I don't make sense. I guess I think everybody. I'm just trying to work. What <clears throat> I'm trying to unravel the potential implications because what, 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 I've, what I've been gathering is that you've been holding a lot of information in here about to drop a bombshell. I'm just trying to work out what the collateral damage of the bombshell is going to be. We've got people that have something that's. But yeah, I should go back to the. A lot of people miss the first hints, and that was the Dow report. This is interesting. Check this the out. The Dow report, for those who don't know, there was a Dow where it was basically like a venture fund, and people would put like 15% of all the ether into the Dow, and then there was a hack. And there's questions about whether or not the hack was an inside job or not. Let's put that aside for a second. But you've got securities violations there, and Hinman papered that over with the Dow report which doesn't make sense because he said basically their grandfather in 2016, 27. Okay, if you don't know, Bill Hinman used to be a, a, a SEC division head, okay? And he was the one who came out and gave Ethereum this free pass. The Ethereum free pass speech was actually helped written by Joseph Lubin and the Ethereum team. Believe it or not, an SEC official gives a speech that was with gives Ethereum the green light. They make billions of dollars and it was actually perpetrated and helped out by Ethereum. Also, the reason this bothers me so much as an individual is because Joseph Lubin, on the same stage that Bill Hammond gave the speech, only a couple hours later, comes on the stage and pretends that he's that he hasn't read the speech, he doesn't know what's in the speech, but then he takes shots at Ripple and XRP. And they've done so for the past several years. Both Vitalik and Joseph Lubin have taken shots at Ripple all while they basically paid to play and get a free pass and bribed a government official. Now, that is why I don't believe that the Ripple lawsuit will go any further because then they will be able to take Bill Hinman, put him on the stand and make this corruption more public. But this could very well take that and make it public. And that's why I think this is a very interesting time and we should be paying attention because this could be a Black Swan event. I'm not saying it's going to be a Black Swan event, but my job is to help provide you with as much good information as possible. I don't know what Stephen Neroff is about to drop, but it could be it could be really crazy. It sounds like it's crazy. And these are not small people that are on this town hall with him. They're giving him a platform to get this information out. So just check it out. But then he goes after Ripple in 20. That's completely inconsistent. Those are inconsistent positions. Steve, you also said something like that. Uh, they start bringing it to what they created a fake case against you. Absolutely. If I remember reading the details of the case, wasn't your case an extortion case against them? And it was made by a project? Yeah, that project was a setup. That project is called Storm X for everybody to know. Simon Yu is the CEO. Ernie Yu was the president. The whole thing was a setup. That's a trap. That's a trap. And when did it start? May of 2017, the same month that Hinman got there. And that co-conspirator, everybody. Why, why do you? Why do you think they? Why do you think they went against you? Why do you think? Where do you? We're not went against we have you? Oh, so we have proof. We got into the government's documents. We have proof, and my attorney's on here. I don't know if he can speak or not. Mike Scotto, if we can put him into speak mode. But we found, this is unprecedented. We found proof that the SEC that fabricated the evidence, literally fabricated it. Like there was documents that we found on FBI letterhead that I had nothing to do with. I never even knew existed. And those are the documents they prosecuted me on. That's pretty crazy. There was no crime. The crime never happened. The discredit, so I'm going to be very clear, the discrediting and the prosecuting out, because I'm the only person who could reveal this whole Ethgate saga and what they did, and they're working with Hinman Shady to get themselves those regulatory passed. Because the regulatory pass is not valid. And Steve, when are you going to drop this? Because I need to, we need to wrap soon. And I see that one of those end up. So just that. No, you... that's something, you know, that's what's the frustrating part is that it's, a, it's up to my attorneys. Um, I'm going to be dropping the recording of the restructuring very shortly. I, I will tell you, I have the attorneys that I have are people that 
they're names that everybody on this call knows. They're luminaries. They're like the top of the industry. So I, I'm anticipating in December where we'll be filing it and, and all the proof will be there. Okay. Um, but there will be some major press about this before the end of this month that will expose all of this. Except they won't have it necessarily. The Iran, should, should we drop the recording, Ran, on a space? How, how long is the recording for, yeah. Stephen? I think it's like a couple hours, right? I thought he said it was like three hours. But... How long is the recording for, Stephen? It almost been like three hours. Three That's going to be a long space, man. And it comes with a transcript, too. Uh, damn, I see your hands up. Your hands been up for a while. In fact, Matty, I'll tell you what. I'll... Yes, Stephen. Fine, so that this is what we're looking at right you also have mr uber posting a bunch of different things check us out this is actually vitalik and laura i can't remember her last name I do apologize what do you think mark will we make history check us out it's about mark fogel yeah, on a related note i wanted to ask also about Stephen narioff a technologist and lawyer who helped ethereum with its crowd sale mm -hmm. he was charged with extortion of a company that was trying to hold an ico in late 2017 and between this and virgil i wonder do you feel ethereum in general needs to do a better job of vetting the people who become involved with the foundation or other core members of the project. On a related note, I wanted to ask also about Stephen Nair, a technologist and lawyer who helped Ethereum with its crowd sale. Better Ethereum for a few years was what. And one of the threads that had been hanging over Ethereum for a few years was whether or not. Ether would be considered a security or whether or not the SEC for its crowd sale. Zebras. It eventually became apparent neither of those things would happen, but were you ever nervous for Vitalik? I wasn't. Yeah, I remember that time and and on the original review you do Vitalik and the foundation. There's a space uh, like the guy's doing the rail. All right. Uh, there's also a couple other things here I wanted to show you. Here is an email chain between Joseph Lubin and Bill Hinman. Would you prefer that I be alone in the call or can I have, a, I can't read what's on the backside of this, but I've been in discussions with you and your colleagues based on Bill's response, right? And then it says, buy yourself lunch while you are sitting at the, you know if it'd be easier to toss out a date that I recommend you in person, keep it in the regime. There's obviously some back dealings, right? This is 2018, April 12, 2018. Dear Joe, I greatly enjoyed meeting you with our team at our offices a couple months ago. I was wondering if you could have a brief call in order to discuss the possibility of another meeting. Thank you. If this is something that could be interesting, we can work out with the assistant in time and place. Thanks, Bill. Bill Hinman, Joseph Lubin, Vitalik, they're all kind of scummy to me, in, in my personal opinion, right? There's something here. And they've called us crazy, they've called us conspiracy theorists, but somebody that is talking about conspiracies is, is a conspiracy theorist until it's proven true, and they were then they're truth tellers, right? What will this be? How will this turn out? Is Ethereum going to 10, 20 grand? Or is something more sinister in, in Ethereum's future because of the actions of its founder not so long ago? I will let you be the judge, and I am on pins and needles waiting for this three hour conversation to drop as well as whatever documents that Steven Neroff is going to give us and I will bring them to you and we will learn and grow about this together. I will see you in the next one. I know this is a little bit different to what we normally do here with the XRP and ISO SEC news, but this is a big freaking deal for Ethereum. Could this be just a gigantic wall in front of Ethereum and its future because of past dealings? It could be. Stay tuned. I'll see you the next time.